how to build a material graph with C++ in Unreal. And by that I mean, you see all the nodes that are on the screen right now? Well, we're going to create all of those by code, so let's get to it. But before we start, this video is going to reuse some code that we wrote in the video 9 of the series, so I strongly recommend to go see that one, but if you're not interested, you can see the code right here. Here we go, so we are in an empty header file and we're going to start with the forward declaration so we can get that out of the way. First forward declaration is going to be the U material because we want to modify a material, so we're going to need that one. And then we also need all the material expressions that we want to add inside the material. Uh, by material expression, I mean everything that is inside a material graph. So the multiply node, the texture node, the vector, the colors, the texture coordinate, uh, add, lerp, uh, divide, everything that you can find in a shader graph, you have to forward include it if you want to create functions that are going to create those. And if you want the complete list of all those material expressions, you can find it right here in the Unreal documentation, obviously. And for today, since we're going to create one function for each of the material expression we want to add to our material, we're just going to limit ourselves to five function, five material expression that we're going to use in the material. Otherwise, the video will be way too long. So for the nodes that we're going to create, we're go first going to create a texture node. So we need the U material expression, the texture sample parameter. 2D, which is the texture node. Then we're going to need a scalar parameter. So U material expression, scalar parameter, then same thing for the vector. So U material expression, vector parameter. And then we're going to need a few other nodes to add those numbers together. So first we need the multiply. So U material expression, uh, multiply. And finally, the U material expression, texture coordinate to modify the texture coordinate of our texture, obviously. So good. So these are all the forward declaration that we're going to use today. So we can now scroll down a little bit and focus on the functions. And here is the first function and actually the main function of today's videos. The function is the build material function. This function we're going to call it, uh, feeding it all the information it needs to know to be able to create the material graph and then that function is going to call all the other functions to create all the different uh, material expressions and connect them together. So in blueprint we just have to call this function and then this function is just going to dispatch the information to all the other functions. So the build material function right here it's going to be the main function function for today and also the biggest one. So this is why right here I had to write this function on two lines because I had too many parameters. But it's just one function, it's just two lines. Okay, good. So first parameter is going to be the material path. So where we want to create the material in the content browser. So here it is, just feed the path of the material you want to create. Then we have the texture path. So which texture we want to use in the material. If we want to use a texture, we're going to provide a texture path. And here it is. It's just another path of the texture that is inside the content browser. Then we have have the text coordinate which is a vector 2d so the texture coordinate that we want to apply to the texture then we want a linear color that I'm going to multiply with the texture to modify the end color of the material so here you can provide a linear color which is going to affect the final result of the material obviously and finally we have three simple float uh, one float for the metallic one float for the specular and finally one float for the roughness so we can play around with the settings a little bit and make sure that everything works properly so good this is going to be the main function in today's video, but we're going to need a bunch of other function, utilities function, to be able to create all the different material expression, but also to find the existing material expression, because we don't always want to recreate the material expression. If it already exists, why not just reusing it? So we're going to scroll down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit to create all those other functions. And this second function is going to be the function that gets the existing material expression inside the material. So get existing material expression from the name. So we're going to provide the name of the material expression we want to look for and then that's going to return it for us and when I say the name I don't mean like uh, multiply as a name or uh, texture coordinate as a name it's going to be the name or the description that we applied ourselves to the node so we can find them we don't want to find any multiply nodes that is inside the graph we want to find one specific multiply node and that's what we're gonna do so here we just have to provide the material in which we want to look for for the material expression obviously uh, we don't want to look into all the materials that are inside the project we want to look inside one specific material so here it is and then we want to look for a specific name or description so if I have a scalar parameter in my material and I named it potato I want to look for that name the name potato but since not all the material expressions are renameable uh, we're going to also look for the description
description. So if we're not able to rename the node, we're going to apply a specific description that we're going to look for later on when we want to find the node. So that's why right here, the name of my variable is name or description. So we can provide either the name of the node or the description. And that function is going to return us the material expression that it found with that name or description. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm returning the material expression that I found in the material. If I didn't find any, well, I'm not going to return anything because, well, the material expression is not in there. Perfect. So that was for the second function. Then we have the third one. And it's going to be the function we're going to use to add a texture parameter to the material. So here we have to provide the material in which we want to add the texture parameter. We want to provide the texture we want to apply to the texture parameter node. And then the name of the parameter. So what do you want to name your texture node in the shader graph? And finally, an end point for the position of the node in the graph, because all the nodes are placed somewhere in the graph and we have to place them ourselves manually. It's not going to happen automatically. Actually, if you let it happen automatically, they are all going to be stacked on top of each other at 0, 0, 0. And that's not what you want. So you're just going to have to specify where you want to place the node in the graph and organize it yourself. And as output, once we added the texture parameter inside the graph, well, I'm just going to return it so we can do something else with it. We can connect it to other nodes or whatever we want. And it's going to be the same ideas for all the other nodes that we're going to use to create material nodes in the graph. So I'm just going to continue scrolling down and add those new other functions. And we have two new functions. So first, a function to add a scalar parameter inside the material to be able to multiply a float by something else in the material. So to add a scalar parameter, it's the same as adding a texture parameter. So we have to provide the material in which we want to add the scalar parameter, obviously. And then we have to provide the value we want to apply to the scalar parameter. So this is going to be a float because it's a scalar parameter. And then the parameter name. So what do you want to name your scalar parameter and where you want to place the scalar parameter inside the shader graph. So here it is, the same inputs. And as output, it's going to return us the scalar parameter, obviously. And then same thing for the vector parameter. So add the vector parameter in the shader graph, the material in which you want to add the vector parameter, the color you want to apply to the vector parameter, because vector parameter are actually colors. So you can apply a color directly to it. So that's why right here, I'm applying a linear color. And then I can provide a parameter name to rename my node. I can place the node wherever I want in the graph, so the node position. And as output, this function is going to return us the vector parameter it just created inside the shader graph. So that's pretty good. And then we have two other functions that we want to create. So I'm just going to continue scrolling down a little bit more. And here they are. So I have my add multiply expression function right here to add a multiply inside the, the shader graph. Same idea, you have to provide the material in which you want to add the node. Then you have to provide the name of the node. In this case, since it's a multiply expression and you cannot rename it, I'm just going to modify its description. So here I'm feeding it the expression desk, which is the description. And finally, the node position where you want to place the multiply node inside the shader graph. And as output, it's going to return you, well, the multiply node. That just makes sense. And finally, the add text coordinate expression inside the shader graph. Same thing. You feed it the material in which you want to add the coordinate node. You have to feed it a value, so the x and y value of the text chord node, and then the expression description, because you cannot rename it, but you can change the description, the node position where you want to place the node in the graph, and finally, it's going to return you the text coordinate node as output. Perfect. So now it's time to jump in the CPP to code all those functions. So in the CPP file, let's start with the include. So first, we need the header file, obviously, and we also need the header file of the video 9 of the series, which is going to let us create a material if we need to. So if the material doesn't exist yet, we can create it easily. Perfect. So now let's jump in the real includes. The first one we're going to need is the material editing library to be able to add the nodes in the shader graph. You need to go through the material editing library, obviously. And that's going to be inside the material editor module, which is a new module. It is also editor only. So we're going to add that inside the build.cs file in a second. But first, I'm just going to add all the other includes that we need today. And it's all the includes of all the different parameters that we want to add in the shader graph. So do we want to add a texture sample? parameter. Yes. So then we need to include it. Same thing for the scalar parameter, vector parameter, the multiply node, and also the texture coordinate node. So we have to include all the ones we want to add inside the material graph. Perfect. So these are all inside the engine module. So we don't have to include anything because it's there by default, but we need to add the material editor module inside the build.cs file. So let's go in there and I'm going to add it right here. Why not? So the material editor module is now included in the build.cs file and everything should work properly. Good. So let's go back in the CPP 
be to focus on the functions. And we're gonna go in the same order as in the header file, so we're gonna start with the build material function, which is at the same time the most complicated function and the simplest one, because we're going to have a lot of logic in there, but it's a pretty simple logic. So, okay, to build the material, the first thing we need, well, is is to create the material and also to find the texture that we want to apply to the material. So let's do that right here. I'm going to static load the material using the material path. So we take the material path, we load the material object that we have right here. And at the same time, since I'm loading assets, I'm also going to load the texture that we receive as input. So the texture path right here, I'm going to load the texture as good. I have my material, I have my texture, but what if the material doesn't exist? Well, we need to create it. So here I'm just going to check, okay, is my material null? If it's null, well, I'm going to use the code from my previous video to create my material asset. So I just have to provide it the material path and it's going to create the material for us. So the material right here, if the function failed to create the material for some reason, well, I don't want to populate the material with a bunch of random nodes that don't mean anything. So I'm just going to return right here because I was not able to create the material. So I don't have to try to build the shader graph because, well, the material doesn't exist. So let's return right here if the material doesn't exist. But if your material path makes sense, the material should be created, no problem. So good. Now we have a material, we can start building the graph. So the first step is to, well, create the node. So I'm going to start by creating my texture coordinate node. The first node in the graph that we then going to connect to the texture, we need to create that node to be able to connect it to the texture. So let's create the texture coordinate expression. So add text chord expression with our new function. And then we have to see in which material we want to add that expression. So the material we either found right here or the material that we just created right here. So the material that we're using, that's the material in which we're going to create the node. Obviously, then we have to feed it the text coordinate value that we want to apply to that node. So the text chord that we receive as in it's going to be good enough and then the description of the node to be able to find it later on if we need to so I'm going to name it uh, my texture coordinate doesn't really matter it's just a nice name for you to be able to find that node later on if you need to and finally the position of the node in the graph these position can vary as much as you want you can place them wherever you want these are just my position I decided to use for my texture coordinate node and as you're going to see at the end the nodes are going to be placed the way I want them to be because well that's the number I wrote right here. So good. We're going to add the texture coordinate node inside the shadow graph and I'm going to have my node right here. That's good. The next node we need is the texture node. So add texture parameter right here. Same thing. Feed it the material. Feed it the texture that you loaded at the beginning of function. Name it. So my texture, the position where you want to place the node in the shadow graph. In my case, that's going to be my position, but it doesn't really matter. You can place it wherever you want. And as output, well, you're going to have the texture node. Then we're going to create all the other ones. So then I have my vector parameter, which is going to be the color I want to multiply with the texture. So I have my material right here, same as usual, the color I want to multiply. So I have my color right here. I named my parameter my color and I place it right there. Doesn't really matter. And I have my color expression right here. After that, I have my multiply expression. So add multiply expression, um, fit it the material in which you want to create the node. Then you can name it to be able to find it later on. So I'm going to name it my color multiply because I want to multiply my color with the texture so that's the name I chose for it and then the position where I want to place the node in the shader graph and that's going to give me the node and same thing for all the three next floats so scala 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 so I have a scala parameter for my metallic a scala parameter for my specular and a scala parameter for my roughness so it's the same functions you have to call for all three of those because they are all scala parameters so add scala parameter same thing you feed the material in which you want to create the scala parameter the value you want to apply to the scala parameter so I have my metallic specular and roughness value and then you can rename it to be able to find it later on so my metallic my specular and my roughness and then you can place them in the graph so these are the position in which I want to place my scala parameter in my shader graph and that's it good now we have all the nodes that we need in the shader graph they are all created they are all there in the shader graph you can place them around move them you can test that code and it's gonna work but we want to also connect the nodes together because right now they are just floating around in the shader graph, no connections are made. So to do that, well, we need another step. We need the step to connect the nodes together. So let's do that real quick. So to connect the node, it's a little bit backward in my opinion. So what do we want to do is uh, connect my texture coordinate to my texture. That just makes sense. And the way it works, well, you have to take the output zero of the texture coordinate. So that's the texture coordinate right here. I'm taking the output zero and I'm plugging it inside the coordinates of my texture. Okay, yeah. 
it goes backwards a little bit. So you're taking the texture coordinate expression, you're connecting it to the texture, that's good. Where in the texture? In the coordinate input, so the coordinate pin, and then you're taking the output zero, which are the UVs of my texture coordinate. I totally agree with you. It's a little bit complicated to visualize all that in your head, but I hope it made sense. But anyway, we're gonna do the same thing with all the other nodes, and then I hope it's gonna make sense by the end of the video. So then we want to multiply the color with the texture. So we need to connect the texture with the color. In between, there's a multiply node that is going to multiply those two nodes together. So first we have to connect the texture to the multiply. So good, take the texture, connect expression to the multiply node. The multiply node, we're going to connect it into, into the A pin of the multiply node. That's fine, that makes sense. And we want to use the pin zero of the texture when we connect it to the multiply node, which is going to be the RGB value. So we're taking the RGB value, that's the zero right here of the texture and connecting it into the A pin of the multiply. And then we're going to take the color node and connect it to the multiply also, but that time inside the B pin. So we can multiply the A and the B together. So the texture and the color. And we're also going to take the input zero of the color expression, which is also going to be the RGB value. So we're really multiplying the RGB value of the texture with the RGB value of the color. Here we go. That should work. And then uh, we actually don't have any other nodes to connect together. We just have to connect everything back to the end of the material. So to connect the multiply the color with the texture to the base color of the material. And then same thing, we have to connect the metallic spec and roughness and that's what we're going to do right here. To do that we have to take the material and then connect what we want to connect to the different channel of the material. So I have the base color right here and I'm connecting it the pin zero of my multiply which is the result of the multiply into my base color. Then for my metallic it's going to be simple I'm just going to connect my metallic scalar parameter inside the metallic. Same thing for the specular I'm going to connect the specular scalar parameter inside the specular and roughness I'm going to connect the roughness scala parameter inside the roughness. Perfect. So now the material should be connected properly. All the nodes should be there and we're actually done with this function. So I'm just going to say that it was a success and I was able to build my material graph. That's good. Everything works. Except that, well, we didn't really code the logic that creates the nodes for us. So we don't have any node to connect to the material just yet. So now we have to scroll down a little bit more to do all those functions. So I'm going to scroll, 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 scroll right here. And before creating all the different nodes, we're going to start by finding the existing expression that are already in the material. So let's start with that function right here. And the way we're going to do that is simply by looping through all the expression that are currently in the material. So loop through all of those. And we're going to check all of those to see if it matches the name or the description that we receive as input. So loop through all the expression. And if at the end of the loop, we didn't find anything, we're just going to return null, meaning that we didn't find any expression that matched the name or description. So loop through all the expressions that are currently in the material, then I'm just going to check, okay, is this expression a parameter? So that's why right here I'm casting it to a parameter to see if it's a parameter, because the parameters, you can name them, you can use the name part of this variable right here, but otherwise, if it's just an expression, we're going to use the description. So if it's a parameter, we're going to use the name, otherwise we're going to use the description. So if it's a parameter right here, I'm checking if it's a parameter. So if it's a parameter, it's not going to be null, so that's going to be good. And then we're going to check the parameter name and we're going to compare it with a name or description that we receive as input. So if the name of the parameter is the same as the name we receive, it means that that's the parameter we're looking for. So we can return it right here. But otherwise, if it's not a parameter, I'm just going to check if the description matches. So if the description of the expression is the same as my input, well, it means that it's the one we're looking for. We're going to base ourselves on the description to decide if we want to return that expression or not. So look through all the expression, check if it's a parameter, if it's a parameter, use the name, otherwise use the description. Perfect. So that's how I'm going to find existing nodes in the material. Now we can create the nodes that were missing, the nodes that are not in the material. So let's scroll down a little bit more right here. And the first node we're going to create is the texture parameter node. So we're going to implement the add texture parameter function right here with the same inputs and everything. And the first step to add a new parameter node inside the graph is to well check if the node is already there because we don't want to create a node that is already there. That's why we have the get existing material expression from name function that we just created. So I have my get existing material expression. I'm feeding it the material in which I'm looking for the texture parameter, which is the same name as the one that we receive as input. So let's look into that material first to 
see if I already have a texture parameter with the same name. If so, that's going to initialize my texture parameter variable right here, and it's going to have the node that is already in the material. That's pretty great. But if the node is not already there, because it's the first time you run your code and you want to create a new shader. So we're going to create a new one in the shader graph. So create a new material expression right here using the U material editing library, and the function is create material expression. We're going to use that library to create an expression, telling it which material you want to use to create the expression. So in which material you want to create the new texture parameter, and then the class of the expression, which is the class of my texture parameter I want to create. So the U material expression texture sample parameter to the, ooh, that's a long name. And that's actually why I moved my cast on the second line, because the line is way too long right now. So yeah. I'm going to feed it the class of the expression we want to create. The function is going to create the expression for us. So it's going to create a texture sample parameter 2D. It's going to return us an expression because that's the parent class of all the material expressions. So I have my U expression right here. And since yes, we want to absolutely return a texture parameter 2D, I am going to recast it into a texture parameter 2D right here for our texture parameter. So then we can use that parameter to set the texture or do whatever we want with it because it's a texture parameter and we know that's the type it was created because that's the class we asked it to create. So that just makes sense. So good. We now have a texture parameter that is created in the material and is ready to be used. But there's actually one last thing we have to do when we create a new texture and it is to register it towards the material because the material is not really aware that the texture exists. I don't know why the create material expression function doesn't register the expression for us. You have to do it yourself in a second step. So that's what we're going to do right here. In my material, I'm going to add a new expression parameter, feeding it the texture parameter and then you just have to refeed all the other parameters that are already in the material. I'm not really sure why it's the case, you just have to do it. So just do it feed it, and then it's going to work. So in the material, add a new expression, the new texture that you just created, and then the material is going to be aware that the texture exists. Perfect. The texture parameter is now in the material and we're ready to use it. So let's do that. We're going to use it. We're going to set the texture, but first and the most important is to set the parameter name and also the position of the node in the graph, because right now it's at 0, 0 and doesn't have a name at all. So let's name it first. So I'm going to set my parameter name using the parameter name that we receive as inputs. That's pretty easy. And then we have to set the x and y coordinates of the node in the shader graph. So that's what we're going to do right here using the node pose x and node pose y. Here we go. So now the node is named properly and is placed at the right place in the shader graph. That's good. Now for the texture specific texture specific variables, we want to set the texture and then maybe something else. In my case, I'm just going to set the texture right here using the texture that I receive as input. And also to show you an example that you can set any other variables that are inside the texture parameter. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to set the sampler type uh, to the color to make sure that it's using the color of my texture. You don't really need to do it because it's the default behavior. But in my case, I just wanted to show you an example. So I'm going to set the sampler type to the color to make sure that it's using the color of my texture. But you can also set any other variables that you want that are inside the texture parameter. So all the variables that you see on the left in the shader graph, when you select a node uh, in the graph, you can access all those variables right here inside the e material expression. So you can set any of those variables uh, to any values you want. Perfect. So that's good. We created the texture parameter. We set all the default values and also all the texture specific values. And now we're just going to return that new parameter we created so we can use it later on in the code. Good. So we created a texture and that's the same logic we're going to reuse for all the other type of parameter we're going to create today. So let's scroll down a little bit more because we have a few of them to create. And it's now time for the scalar parameter. So add scalar parameter and the logic is going to be the same. So the first step is to try to see if there's already a scalar parameter inside the material. So get existing material expression from name using the material and the parameter name that we receive as input to see if the node already exists. This time I'm going to cast it to the U material expression the scalar parameter because that's the type of node we want to create. We want to create a scalar parameter. So that's why I'm casting it right here and setting my scalar parameter variable right here. And then that variable is possible that it's not valid in the case that the node doesn't already exist in the graph. So I'm just going to check to see if it's not valid. And if it's not, well, I'm going to create the scalar parameter myself. So here, same thing using the U material editing library, I'm going to create a material expression using the material and feeding it the class of the parameter I want to create. In this case, I want to create a scalar parameter. So I'm feeding it the scalar parameter class. I'm not going to feed the texture class. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. It's going to create a texture and we don't want that. We want a scalar parameter. So feed the scalar parameter class. 
Okay, so feed the Scala parameter class. Perfect. So it's going to create an expression for us that we can cast to that Scala parameter class. Here we go. It updates our variables that we can then register into the material, uh, just like that, the same way we did before, register the Scala parameter. And now we have a nice Scala parameter that we can start using. And we're going to do the same thing for, as for the texture. We're going to start by setting the default variables, so the parameter name using the parameter name we receive as input, and also the position X and Y using the node position that we receive as input. And the last thing we have to set is the value of the scalar parameter using the float that we have right here. And that's what I'm going to do right here just by setting the default value to the value we receive as input. And that's it. That's as simple as that. Now I can return the scalar parameter at the end of the function. And we can continue scrolling down because we have more function to create. And here is the function to create a vector parameter. So add vector parameter. We're checking to make sure that the node doesn't already exist in the material. So we're getting it if it exists. Uh, casting it to a U material expression vector parameter because that's a vector parameter this time. If it doesn't exist, well, we're going to create it the same way as before, but this time we're using the U material expression vector parameter class and then setting that into a variable, casting it to the right class and setting it into the vector parameter register into the material, set the default variable and then setting the default value to be the color that we receive as input. And that's it for the vector parameter. Now we can go to the next one, which is the multi multiply expression. So add multiply expression and we're doing the exact same thing. So right here we're checking to make sure that the node doesn't already exist in the material. If so, we're going to retrieve it instead of creating a new one. So you material expression multiply, that's the class we're going to use because we want to create a multiply. If the node already exists, that's good. We have the node right here, but if it doesn't, we're going to create it. Same technique as before, create a material expression in the material using the class of the multiply because that's the node we want to create, the multiply node. So so create it right here and then we can simply cast it to set the local variable that we have, register it into the material and then we can set the default parameter right here. In this case we just have the description and also position of the node that we have to set because it's a multiply. You don't have to set a scalar parameter, a color or anything else. It's just a simple multiply node so we just have to place it in the graph and then we can return it at the end because we now have a nice multiply node and now it's time for the final function which is for the texture coordinate node and and the technique is exactly the same. So add text code expression. This time we're going to use the U material expression texture coordinate class because that's the class of the texture coordinate node. Same thing, we're getting the existing one, casting it to that class and setting the local variable. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create it. Same thing, create material expression right here using the class of the texture coordinate because that's the one we want to create, casting it to that class and then setting it into the new local variable that we have right here. And then we can register it to the material and then we can set the default value so the description and the material position x and y as usual and this time we can also set the uv tiling of that node because that's what the node is for we want to set the uv tiling of the texture so that's what we're doing right here and then we can return the texture coordinate node at the end of the function right here and that's it now it's time to go in unreal to test if it works so in unreal as usual i created myself a nice user interface to be able to test all that super easily so first we have the path of the material. So here it is. I can write the path where I want to create my material in the content browser. Then we have the texture path. So the texture we want to use for the material. In this case, I'm going to reuse the texture that we imported in the video three of the series. So here it is. And then we have the texture coordinate, which I can edit using those two spin boxes right here. So the X and Y coordinates. And then we have the color. So the R, G, N, V of the color that is going to be multiplied by the texture. Then we have three final spin boxes for the specular metal and roughness variable. So we have them right here. And when I click on build material, it's good. it should feed all those parameters to the material while I'm creating it. And to do that, well, I'm using a simple function in the event graph right here of my blueprint. I'm simply calling the build material function that we just created, feeding it all the different parameters. And there's a lot of them. So I have the path of my material that I want to create. I have the path of my texture. I have the X and Y coordinates of my UVs. And then I have my R, G, and B of my my color that I want to multiply my texture with. And finally, I have my uh, three last spin box for the metallic, specular, and roughness. And I'm feeding all those parameters to the function, and the function is going to create the material for us. And to test all that, I'm just going to go back right here and run my editor utility widget, the scroll at the bottom, and I have my little user interface right here, and it's all set up properly. So I can simply click on build material, and it should create the material for us. On the left right here, we can see that it created a new folder, and I have my new material in there 
and if I open it, uh, we can see how it looks. Here it is, I have my nice uh, material. So I have a texture coordinate, the way I asked, uh, and then I have a texture, a color, multiply, and then three scala parameters that are connected to the final material node. And it seems to work my texture coordinate. I'm just going to expand right here. We can see that the U and V tiling are one to one, uh, same thing as I wrote in my user interface. Uh, the texture is the right one, it's the one uh, from that path right here. The color is the same as my user interface, so one, 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 and then my three scala parameters right here are 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.1, which are the same as my user interface. And that also means that I can edit those values, so I can change those values right here. I can put everything to one right here, and let's say I can change the texture coordinate to something like that. Why not? And I can click build material. It's going to update all those nodes, and it looks like it didn't, but it did. You just have to close the window and reopen it because the material graph doesn't update uh, automatically. You just have to uh, refresh it yourself uh, when you're running that code. But you can see here that the result is quite different because we change all those variables right here. The little smiley icon is a little bit stretched because I changed my texture coordinate. I changed the color to a blue and everything is set to one right here, the same way as my user interface. Oh, there's a little bit of a rounding error right here, but it doesn't really matter because we can see that the values are updated properly. And same thing, I can decide to create as many materials as I want. I don't have to always remodify that one. And actually I'm saying modify because we didn't recreate all those nodes. We just updated the values of the nodes. They are all the same nodes. It's just that the values have changed. I didn't create duplicate of all those nodes and stack them on top of each other. It's always the same nodes that are just reused. So that's pretty good. But now we're going to create a new material, a completely new material. So we'll just change a few variables right here, change the color, whatever. You can remove uh, metallic specular and roughness completely. And then let's say change the name to be able to have a new material. And now I can build the material and I have it right here. And if I open it, uh, we can see that it matches the setting that I wrote in my user interface. So it seems to work pretty well. I can change that once more time to have another material. I can try to in input an invalid texture. This time it's going to set the, the texture to nothing because the texture is now invalid. So if I reopen the material, the texture is now set to nothing because the texture is invalid. The material doesn't compile, but eh, that's just how it is. And that covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover to build the material with C++. So that's going to be it for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye!